All right, so we think we're live. We hope we're live. <laughs> so I'm Adrian Park, and uh, welcome to the first Contractors Corner of 2024. It's a big day. Um, ah. With me today, founder of Contractor AI, master roofer, Ooh. the AI robot whisperer, Oh, good. Looking like he just came off of an MTV set. <laughs> and <laughs> the only person I know with a power name that chooses not to use it, John James <laughs> Carter. <laughs> I like it. All right. So it's the first, it's our first live stream of 2024. And there are so many things we want to talk about today. Um, I thought so I'm going to share to start us off. Um, so for those who haven't watched us before, uh, Jay runs a um, eight figure, very successful roofing business in the greater Toronto area and um, has done that for 23 years. However, his team runs the business and that's why he's on here with you and me today. Uh, I ran a masonry restoration business in Western Pennsylvania, uh, took that from losing $100,000 a year um, in the three years previously, a year, um, to netting a million dollars and um, having all sorts of fun and success. So uh, we're here to talk about uh, planning. How, what, what should we do to start the year? So here we are, we're contractors, and uh, it's 2024. Um, However, for folks that do a lot of work exterior, uh, it's a little bit of a lean time because winter is uh, winter's a tough time, right? And when I came into the business, uh, so we were obviously Mason Restoration is an exterior envelope uh, uh, trade. And um, that was a new thing to me because I was new to the industry. And um, I was like, wait, we don't work for three months? <laughs> like, <laughs> what the hell? Um, and I know some some people might think that's really stupid watching right now. Like, well, of course, they don't work for three months. But I didn't know that. You know, I didn't that that, that didn't occur to me until like Thanksgiving uh, of that first year. And um, that first year was uh, rough, like really rough. And every winter, in fact, for me personally, I had to go without pay again and again and again. It was rough, and uh, I ended up using the time a lot and maybe we'll talk about that a little bit more as we get into this today and so i ended up really looking forward to it but um you know i think it's really like kind of like a or b for a lot of contractors so for you you've spent the time planning i spent the time planning the, the off season for me now we did have we did get some really nice winter jobs over those seven years but um it was you know, and, the, and we made a lot of money on those jobs. And it was great. But like when we didn't have a big winter job, um, I used the opportunity to plan and train and, and really think about what we were going to do uh, for the year and the next year and so on. And so I think that, you know, I think it's a tough time for a lot of folks out there because mm -hmm. it's like, Ooh, like I got to get, th you know, got to try to get through it and like screen, you know, like basically pester your pester your customers to get those payments in and, and squeeze and squeeze and maybe call your vendors and ask your vendors if you can like, I'll get, I'll get it. I'll get you the payment. Um, I know I did a lot of that on the first couple of years. So, you know, so we're going to get right into this today. Um, Jay, let's, you know, let's talk about, you know, so obviously there's some folks that are like where this is a tough time of year. I don't mm -hmm. know that let's focus on that as much as like, so, for those that are planning right now, maybe let's, t can we talk to them and yeah. help them? Because I think that, I think that one, I think sometimes it's like when you're thinking about planning, it's one of those things that is, can be very overwhelming because you go, well, yeah. I mean, we wanted a sales number and then, you know, and then you start thinking about your sales and then you're like, gosh, we got to get some leads and, you know, we didn't get as many leads or, you know, they were a lot of garbage leads. And then you right. start thinking, ah, oh, so, you know, then, then I got close more jobs and, you know, and so you start, I think as soon as, you know, I'm just, just from my experience working with contractors and also being one, 
um, even as someone who's pretty good at strategic planning, if I can say that three times fast, it was still overwhelming because you because then you start going to this like daisy chain of like this, then this, then this, then this. So let's maybe let's start off and maybe help. Yeah. Guys so, and ladies that are planning, where should where should people so, be starting right now? OK, so we got to really think of two two sides of this right so one is the guy that is working for himself still on the tools kind of okay. you know right. at that starting level and i'll yeah. uh, and i'll give you a, a system that's very easy there it's more personal planning than it is you know business planning and stuff like that and and i want to be very clear about some things okay yeah. um when you start to scale a business all right so when you have a team all right three or more and when you I say you... team do you mean like in the field or in the office so both. ideally you would have some, at least an admin in your office or somebody okay. that's, you know, along those lines um, and you have field staff. So let's just, let's hypothetically call them departments or divisions, whatever you want to call them. Okay. Right. right. Yeah. The importance of planning goes up exponentially when you're running a business, yeah. you know, where it's, uh, you know, a low, like you don't have a lot of staff and stuff like that. Um, it's relatively easy. It's more planning right. yourself and getting yourself right. in line and knowing what right. you're going to take action because you're the one that's doing the hard lifting, heavy lifting. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, that is a that is a trap that kept me trapped for a long time. Is that which which part taking of that to scale? So you end up having to plan basically with yourself. You have to yeah. you have to be more um, internally planning your, your operations and making goals by yourself and, and really kind of picking out targets. Now here's the problem that happens. And I'm just going to warn anybody that might be between, you know, okay. being that guy, Warning. right. Warning. And yeah. starting to have and develop a real team or scaling. Okay. So we're talking about four or five people. Maybe you got a, an estimator or a salesperson, whatever. Okay. Right. Your, you, what you have to do now is more from the manager, managing your business, right. managing right. problems, managing, and you have to very quickly put on a new hat that is a leadership CEO hat. And I'll explain to you what I mean right. and what the differences are. So right. planning for me is two objectives, two objectives that would be, hey, looking at these numbers last quarter, I want... You know, I want to increase sales in this vision. So I'll give you the exact OKR that we're using, or I use an OKR system. You'll hear me kind of refer to it. Yeah, um, but I'm going to give the top is? line objective. Can yeah. Just, so it's yeah, objectives okay. and key objectives and key results. Okay. Yeah. If you think about it, it can be used at a personal level. It can be used at a at a, at a, at a high level. But essentially, this this is what Fortune 500 companies companies like Google they all use a system like this because it allows us to be objective based leaders. OK, yeah. so an objective is this is the big vision or the big view in the next three months. So for my team, it was to generate an additional nine hundred thousand in uh, B2B business. Okay? OK, so we were we were running a campaign. And for my sales team, that was what it was. There was a second okay. objective is to reduce steel waste. So waste that's okay. unaccounted or unbilled for down yeah. below um, below a certain point. So we wanted to reduce yeah. it by 15 percent. Our our waste right. was very high. Yeah. Um, so I'll tell you exactly how it does that. That's where my, my position in my role stopped. I stopped right there is that here's me. I'm going to make the statement and say, here's the objectives. And now I'm going to look at my team and go, okay, I'd like you to now create your own objective to how you're going to contribute to making this happen. Okay. Right. And I'm going to, and we're going to talk about it, but now it becomes, we go to, you know, a division or, um, you know, a role even in your company. So sales, sales, how are you going to, yeah. How are you going to help me complete this objective? Well, we're going to do this and that we're going to do that. Okay, that sounds good. All right. I'm not going to get as much involved, but then they're going to start to put, and this is where the key is here. They have to start to put KPIs and key results underneath those categories that tell me how they're going to get to that point. So they're, so you're not telling them. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I want, you know, I want That's right. this exact thing. You say, That's right. here's the, here's the bigger picture, more specific Here's a big target. View. Yep. How do we get, how can we get there? That's right. So now what I'm doing is I'm forcing them, okay, to move beyond just being a manager that's being told what to do by upper yeah. management. So you're creating that rake. And I'm basically giving everybody a, a limited space um, to prove themselves out as being their own person. They can think of their right. own solutions. They are in charge of that objective and those key results. Now, here's how I keep them accountable and why it makes it so easy, okay? Because I don't okay. give a shit 
how they Wait, get to the objective. It's easy? It's much, <laughs> it's, it's easy. <laughs> it is wildly easier than any other type of planning you're going to do. And here, and I'll, I'll okay. tell you why again. Yeah. Because Please. when, <laughs> when you, when you teach somebody, okay, to effectively plan for themselves, to effectively write a, a almost a mini business plan for themselves of how right. they're going to do it. And you get them to go through the process. Okay. Number one is you're empowering them versus yeah. managing them, which is my, or micromanaging. So for example, for most bosses out there, because they do the initial planning first, I, I call all the shots and I, and we have the vision, like the director being like Mr. Wizard behind the, behind the, the, uh, <laughs> the um, thing. Well, I don't remember what yeah. it was, but. The curtain, okay. that's it. Where's that's the, the word. Yeah. Right. So when we have that vision, though, that doesn't work at scale. It does not function because you right. need leaders to right. run and operate your business. You need people, executives that know what yeah. they're doing and that you can give over control to. And here's the thing. I give up control. All right. And this is a key. And this is the big, this is the big difference. I don't yeah. want the control. Do you know why? Right. Because it equals a couple time. Ideas. Yeah, but go ahead. Right. Yeah. Because it's my time. If I have control, I'm also accountable to the outcome. Right. Where if I'm giving up that control and I'm saying, okay, I, you know, I, I agree with that. Now I'm going to move my position into coach. I'm not going to tell. So it's not my job to be right. I don't, I'm no longer, I don't right. try to be the smartest guy in the room. I don't try to be right. My job is to get it right. At the end of the day, it's going to yeah. be right. Right. Okay, but we're going to let people make micro mistakes. They're going to struggle, but they're going to learn. And more importantly, they're going to know black and white. They did or they didn't. What did right. we learn from this? Right. Like there's a whole process that goes to it, but you're developing your people. You're leading yeah. your staff. You're leading people to think for themselves. And yeah. that's the difference between managing and leading. When you want right. to manage a business, you're not letting people think for themselves. You're telling them what to do. Right. right. You're directing them what to do. And a lot of times this ends up below the line. OK, so, you know, I always below try to think. Of, yeah. So I'm going to explain this to you. So there's okay. two types of two types of ways of looking at things. All right. So you use the example of, oh, shit, I've got all these leads. I got to get all these leads in, blah, blah, blah. And like I've got all these roadblocks. OK, right. Right. I would call that thinking uh, below the line thinking. So if I'm in front of an audience and I'm concerned about those things, what is my audience concerned about? finding leads, blah, blah, blah. I've just transferred right. my concern to them below the line. Right. Now here's right. an above the line um, way of looking at, it. Hey guys, this is where we need to be. Right. All right. And we're going to do it by this point. How are we getting there? Right. Right. I'm not concerned about not making the, the target or the goal. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm going to lead my team and give them the vision, give them yeah. the big picture. And right. you'll be amazed how quickly you can move and scale as a business because now people feel empowered versus right. feeling feeling you know managed and and again yeah. for for a players or even really top mb players yeah you you can pull the leadership out of them by doing this so when they're accountable and they they're they they know they're in charge of it two things are going to happen number one they're going to fail and fail miserably and they'll hate it right that's not right. the person that should have been in the spot okay right. so you right. know <laughs> and it, there's no explaining it it's yeah. black and white you're not the bad right. guy either that right. that person's not capable of the role you want them to play, all right? right. Or two, they're going to start to really blossom in front of you, take control, all right? Yep. And that's what you yes. want, that you want right. them to think about every detail and and take over the ownership you pr previously had for that, that thing. So if it's growing sales, great. I have a salesperson. Too often I see and I hear, all right, and I've done myself. I hired right. the salesperson and guess what I'm doing every day? Hey, did you get that quote done? Did you get this? Yeah. Did you do that? Yeah. Are you doing this? Are you doing that? Like yeah. that's not, if you hired someone that can't plan their own day and can't right. do the job that you expect from them, then you have the wrong person in place. Number right. one, right. but just, you yeah. may have the right person, but you're a shitty boss. Right. That's and it, all it yeah. takes is this below the line approach where we're micromanaging. We're standing over because we need to have that control. Right. Yeah. And that's, again, it really, you know, if we're looking at, um, you know, how to get out of your business. And I hear it all the time. It's as much a problem as the owner themselves. Okay. They get in their way and I've certainly done it. I've been a boulder in my own business. When yeah. I finally got out of the way and learned yeah. how to, how to lead my team versus controlling my team, everything right. changed. Okay. Number one is you start to really think, change the way you think about problems and, and solutions. So yeah. I've used the, the phrase, I'm not trying to be right. Cause I know a lot of times I won't be, but right. if I'm, if I'm wrong, 
who's it on? Right? right. I'm only going to take ownership of the things that I that I know I can that that are in my my realm. So if I'm yeah. if I'm not wanting to be involved with any of the operations and stuff, I'm not putting my my hand in there to get yeah. to get slapped. I'm going to yeah. let my people micro fail, and I say that because it's going to happen. People learn through failing and struggling and trying, Absolutely. and you build Absolutely. the confidence in them yeah. through it. But yeah. where OKRs come in, and let me just where OKRs yes. come in is. Because you're now forcing them to think for themselves and map out their plan, add the KPI. So how are we going to measure this? All right. And it's a practice you do on every quarter. It's every three months. And here's a specific reason why we do it in 90 day terms. And I'll explain okay. to you exactly why. So yeah. when we want to run a 90 day planning quarter. So anything that you're that we're talking about here is, is ultimately going to involve a change. We need to change from this right. to that. Yeah. Okay. Well, it takes 90 days for most human beings, okay, to get something into a pattern or become a habit. So at the beginning of the 30 days, it's going to be rough. All right. People are going to struggle. They're going to be, you need to manage that change that's occurring. All right. And that's where a lot of the talk about, are you thinking above the line or below the line? Right. Are we in scarcity or are we in abundance? Where, where are we thinking at? And are you being a leader? Or are you trying to manage or control a situation? Because if you're trying to manage or control a multi-million dollar business, you can't. No one person can actually oh, do no. that. And right. I may be honest with you, and you don't want to. Because no. listen, it's no fun. If you want to, if no. if you want to be the the dictator of a business that size, number one, you're gonna you're not gonna attract the right people. Okay. And and I always want to hire up. I want to find people way better at something right. than I could ever imagine right. being. That is my yes. ultimate goal. And it should be everyone's goal yes. here. That, that the only way you're going to retain those people is by focusing on your leadership, by being able to understand what right. your emotions are and how you're feeling and, you know, getting out of the way a lot of the times. Yeah. And this is the system that I've implemented. It's the simplest way. And then I know the results because there's going to be days when things don't work. There's going to be days when things feel broken right. and all you're there for at that point if you're playing a true CEO role or an executive role is to coach your team. You can't run in and put out that fire. If you start putting out fires and jumping in and, and thinking for your team, A, you're not going to develop anybody or B, you're going to find out very quickly you have the wrong person in the wrong spot. Right? Right. So what would you rather? I think both outcomes are, are, are good enough. I rather find out quickly going through these things that somebody's not suited for it remove them because it's the ultimate test right right? and here's the here's the more attractive part for anyone that's at this stage of their business and really stressed about planning don't plan you've already done it you've been doing it you got to that point right all right where you had to painstakingly plan take that that whole process that you've done and systemize it okay so systemize it think about each department or each yeah. division or role and now now get that person that's in that role to think for themselves like and you will be absolutely incredibly amazed yeah. provided you've hired half decent people of right. how quickly problems can be solved and where the vision of the company ends up because your job again is to provide vision it's to look ahead and say hey this is where we're going to be yeah. and this is why i know that's going to happen over time what happens is as your team learns, so I've had the the issue come up a few times where somebody's bet big, I'm going to do this, over-promised and way under-delivered, okay? Right. Now I'm going to come in and you tell me what's above the line or below the line, okay? Right. I'm going to come in and say, hey, man, we missed some objectives, key results. W- what happened here, right? Because you made the goals. I didn't, you told me what you were going to do right. by when and where, right. and like it was very specific, right? Yeah. What happened, w- w- like it's a black and white conversation, you either did or you didn't. Okay. Right. Either he's going to tell me what he learned. All right. Or he's going to tell me how he's going to improve it. He's going to improve his efficiency in calling shots, which you right. want. All right? right. Or again, he's just going to crumble in and fall out. And now, he's going to give you a lot of excuses as right. to why. Yeah. So here's a, here's, here's the other side, or you can continue to do dictatorship top down management. All right. We missed our quarterly goal. This, this, uh, you know, this quarter. Okay. It happened because of this guy or it happened because of that guy. This guy didn't do what he was supposed to do. This guy didn't like who, who the, who the hell is going to own that? It's you just, right. you, you know, now, now you're speaking down. Shoulda, coulda, woulda, shoulda. Like you've yeah. just set the worst example for your team. And there is no opportunity to coach from that, 
from that position. There's no opportunity to lead yeah. because you've you've already lowered yourself well, into the accountability yeah. of that happening, yes or no. Right. And I think and I think to that point, um, that's where we've got to get out of our own way. That's and right. We've got to be very honest with ourselves because mm -hmm. not all the time, but if your people, if a lot of your people are giving you excuses, it may not be it like it may not be because they're bad employees. But are mm -hmm. you doing the same thing, right? When they right. when they come to they're, you, they're mimicking do you take it. They're mimicking it. Right? Do right. you take responsibility, or do you blame mm -hmm. it on the sub, or do you blame it on the GC, or do you blame it on the owner, or do you blame it That's on right. them? Right. That's right. So because again, I think the important, most important thing to keep in mind with all of this is for people who want to run a scaled company. A lot of people like the idea of it. Okay. And we see right. this day in and day out. There's a common theme that ends up occurring is that once they get uncomfortable, all right, because they're growing or something, they have the tendency to kind of self-sabotage, throw them, throw themselves under right. the bus and they get concerned with people, you know, this guy's not doing his role and he starts to micromanage and takes yeah. away all of the vision and all of the leadership and all of the positive things that get people motivated takes it all right. away comes right. in screams you know throws his hands up you know makes comments to his, his staff woulda shoulda coulda you did this you did like that is not the way to ever scale a business and this is why guys stay stuck for years and years right. and here's the other point of it you if you start to understand how people overall and i get to be uh, this is the funnest part of my job and why i truly do it is that i okay. completely buy in and, and understand how people manage change, how they emotionally uh -huh. go through the curve of change. And I've seen it over and over again. I can time it on my watch. If I change your toothpaste today, you're going to have the same experience. Every human being is hardwired on planet earth to, to go through it. If yeah. you know that, okay. And you're emotionally intelligent enough to keep control of that. You'll start to find that this whole time, that you haven't been achieving these big goals and these big ideas was exactly because you didn't have you, like you didn't manifest this you didn't make that happen right. and your team's going to follow suit if you think yeah. small your team's going to yeah. think small and it's yeah. and and it, there's no hiding that so when it comes to team planning and objectives i want to i want to kind of give you a little bit more structure to how this could work and how even the most controlling person can learn to be a better leader using yeah. something like this in place. So, and and again, I've I I work with I've worked with tons of micromanagers. I've been a micromanager, and it was purely out of fear and discomfort of change. Right, right. right. That is yeah. that is what it's always come back down to. Is I'm scared. I haven't done this before. I feel like an imposter, or blah blah blah, yeah. or like this is moving too fast. Uh, there's got to be something I can control in this yeah. process. And I want to tell you, it's just not. It's just not reality right well i think too like so you know i have you know when i came into it i was a very like type a you know let's get them let's kill you know and the thing that i found and i remember so i um i went to tony robbins business mastery in january of 2017 came back just jacked and i was excited and i was like we're gonna do three and a half million dollars this year and we had done 1.7 that was the biggest year in company history in 39 years mm -hmm. and uh i wish today that i had a i had a i would camera in the room to have the faces and the reactions of everybody yeah. in the room because it was everything from shock to you've got to be fucking kidding me get the fuck out of here mm -hmm. um they were not excited about that no. and uh, and so the thing that I remember feeling a lot, because we didn't do three and a half million. Now we did do it two years later, but the thing that I remember feeling was a lot of pressure because I had come up with this goal mm -hmm. and it's now, on you. right. And now, and now if we don't hit it, everyone looks at me like, yeah, I told you so, you know, these little a-holes, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so I was it was a lot of pressure in it. And then, and then it kind of put me at like this at odds relationship with my team, uh, which really wasn't my team. Uh, but you know, that's a whole other conversation. 
but it was, so I had this immense pressure. And then of course the owners looked at me like, okay, are we going to do three and a half million? Um, right. So it was, that was very difficult. Fast forward to uh, two years later and I had to learn some really hard lessons and I put together a leadership team. Mm -hmm. And that leadership team wasn't just front office people, right? I got the type, the top people, my top pr producers, right? Top, top, mm -hmm. top contributors from the field. And I pulled them into like a leadership team and, you know, and they were shocked. Like they, they were, <laughs> it was so funny because, you know, they're like, what is this? What are we doing? And I, and then I explained it to them. And that was one of the best decisions I ever made because mm -hmm. just like you said, so you know, I would give them a lot of detail, right? So they always knew what our budgets were on time, mm -hmm. on materials, on equipment. And so they managed that stuff for me. I didn't have to show up on the job site every day and go, well, well, why is this machine still here? Or why is, you know, why did we use X amount of gallons of this? They didn't have to do any of that stuff. Not none of it, right? And, mm -hmm. you know, it was so, like, I remember it was one of the, most satisfying things I've done professionally was working with that group of men and women because the, I mean, first of all, we printed money. I mean, mm -hmm. printed money and you know that cause we worked together, but mm -hmm. it was also so cool to see. And I'm saying this specifically for maybe like, you know, the men and women out there that are like, you want to get there, but like, you just heard what I said about the goal thing. And maybe you've had that experience or you don't know how to get there. And we're going to talk about that, but I, I but to, to, I want you to know what it's like to be on the other side of it, which mm -hmm. is, it's so cool because your people grow and they, I mean, they were so engaged and then they were coming to me with ideas. Like, what if right. we did this? What if we did this? And they came up with some incredible smart innovation stuff that, and I was like, we need to do this. And we put it into the business. And yes. then they felt like, I mean, you could just see like they were glowing with like excitement because they came up with that. I didn't tell them, Hey, I had this idea. I saw this thing online. Can you do this? Right. Mm -hmm. I didn't push it to them. They brought it to me and it was brilliant. And I was like, yes, right. we got to do that. Right. right. And so some and things I was like, well, we can't do that yet. Cause we don't have the money, <laughs> but like, you know, so yeah. you have to make decisions, but like it was the coolest thing ever getting to see my people grow and learn That's, and like i mean it was here's amazing. the here's mm -hmm. the thing here's the thing that i've seen and I, by the way i put okrs in literally hundreds of businesses and got them using it so it's simple first of all um and we're gonna i want to go into the structure a bit but it's also something that you have to understand in terms of managing a team and leading a team is um you need to get buy-in all right if right. you want to go in and be a dictator and dictate to a team, then you are now accountable for the whole respond. outcome. That's yeah. how they're going to respond. And you're yeah. going to actually make people afraid to make yes. mistakes. When yes. that happens, that's game over. You will never get yeah. out of your operation. You will have nothing but people that need you for every decision, everything, because they're afraid of making a mistake. That is the worst, most toxic culture that you can get. Yeah. And that's where people feel stuck. But now let's flip it on the other side and go, okay, you know what? I'm going to control the vision. I'm going to right. control the 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 big picture view. For my own control, you know, needs, I'm going to make sure that this, I own the structure. I don't give a shit about right. owning the ideas. I don't give a right. shit about, you know, the right. other things. I'm going to own the structure and I'm going to make sure that I'm holding the scoreboard and not right. on the field playing the game. All yeah. right? That's for them That's to right. do. All right? I keep myself out. I don't want to be a referee. I don't want to be yeah. – I I own the scoreboard. So I think that's really hard, Jay, for people. And I Absolutely. think – You know, maybe I've got some ideas on that. And I – because, again, you and I are both, I think, come from like a command and control mm -hmm. so that we can – so we don't lose. And we both had to learn to let go. And the big time. It's all about it's, letting it's go. Hard. It's so Very first hard. First of all, it's really hard. And if you're still controlling everything and you're listening to us and like, you know, telling us to go F ourselves, that's fair. But like I'm saying, and Jay, you agree with me. It's hard. It's not easy. Yeah. And it's not like a two day, three day, four day, five week thing. This is, it takes yeah, this, time. It takes time. But yeah. here again, it's, it's also about reprogramming the outcome that you're not happy with now, right? So if you're not happy yeah. with the growth, right. with with where you are starting 2024, and it's time for a change, this is the easiest way that we can do it, all right? The easiest thing to do is, first of all, fix yourself, OK? 
Okay. Yeah. If you have control issues, if you have those fears, if you have that trauma, like, cool, let's, let's figure out how to work with it until it's gone until we eliminate right. it. Cause I certainly had all these things. And when things don't work out or you get screwed over, we all get our backs up and we're afraid to try again. Okay. Right. This right. is where, and, and I'm going to just share my screen so we can quickly, quickly go through just kind of how, <laughs> how this works. All right. So let's yeah. just, let's put this into practical, usable things today. Okay. Yeah. How so can, first so of all, I, I, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, Jay, just real quick. So I think, you know, maybe if we could answer one question, because I know that uh, people I talk to ask this question and, and I'm certain, I'm sure some of our clients are asking like, what's a realistic goal? How do they set a real, not some pie in the sky thing, but like, can we help them with this? Yeah. Get that, get that answer. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we can go through the smart, the smart goal uh, framework. I mean, that's a principle to this. Um, yes. But a realistic goal, um, I'll, I'll explain to you. When I look at objectives, I'm, I'm making it a big view. I'm looking at my vision for the company. Where do I want to be in one to three to five years? If you don't have right. that, it's hard to do anything. Okay. So Agreed. if you hold yourself accountable, like, Hey, in one year I'll be here. Like you got to get that out of your head and share that with your team. Don't right. write it down and throw it into right. some business plan somewhere. Yeah. That's not how they're used. Okay. That's how you guide this team when you're not there. All right? right. And then you have to test that vision on your team. Do they believe in it? Do they buy in on it? Do they right. actually feel like this is like, again, if they don't, then you need to look at that vision. And again, it gets back down to reality because I'll tell you, right. Um, again, this comes down to it's not you personally that's going to get you to that goal. It's going to be you right. and your team that's right. and the people that's you right. surround yourself with. Yes. So it's yes. not for it's not for you. And then again, think about it. If you have this out of the way and you've got the big, clear vision where you should be focusing. All right. Let's break this down now into an objective. Every quarter, we're going to plan with our team. Why? Because teams need leadership. They need right. to know what pathway, where do we want to go? What are we like? And you hold the keys to that. So right. when we create objectives, we want to look at everything in three months. All right. And these are, these are meant to be something you can very clearly answer yes or no, black or white. We did or we didn't. And it's just that way. Now, I've right. always been in the habit that I set my objectives just slightly above what we can achieve. OK, yeah. so this is right. where we, we talk about setting realistic goals. I know what's slightly unrealistic because I've right. been through it over and over. It becomes a habit. Right. We do it every time. I know who hits it, like who's 70, 80 percent. And it's it's very trackable. It's, it's a very it's a simple but, you know, uh, a, a system that you want to keep your team online with. Okay. So slightly above, not what I did, which was double. Right. <laughs> right. But again, above. yeah. And you have to, you, here's the other, it's here's important. the other trick with it. Yeah. Right. So once you start to put this into practice, the first time you do it with your team, no, you will be leading objectives and like force feeding right. key results. Don't expect it to be perfect. Go for the 80, right. 20 rule here. You only want it to be about 80% in anything you do. Don't try right. to be perfect. Don't try to, you know, and don't be that upset if you don't hit it. That's okay. It's a learning experience. It's meant to be flexible. Okay. Yeah. So now let's say that we get through and we do them twice. OK, people start to understand a little bit more. And by the third time, the third round of that. So we're talking nine months into the year, you know exactly what your team can output. So think about yeah. the guys that have been struggling to get that thing implemented right. for months right. and years and like never got it done. Why are you putting that pressure on yourself to do that thing right. when if you broke it up into bite sized pieces and divided it amongst the team, two things are going to happen. Number one is they're going to. They're going to take ownership of it and own yeah. it. And that's the most right. powerful thing is because it's not your idea. It was their idea. and They bought right. in on it. Now right. we're all on board together. Okay. You want your team to, to, to follow and to listen and to do it. Don't try to command, get them to use their own heads on how they were going to get to that. You make the adjustments right. as necessary, but you set very clear results. Okay. So if we yeah. were to do this objective for the next three months and we'll just, you know, kind of look at it like how, how do we know that we got our objective? Okay. And this is about how you do these things. So they're effective. Okay. So yeah. we're going to measure it. So for example, you know, we wanted to increase or have 900,000, very easy to measure, isn't it? Yeah. We take right. the, where we are currently. Did we hit it? Yes or no. That's a, that's a very easy thing for the team to follow and to know that they are now. 
every single week, I'm going to have a stand-up meeting with this key. You don't just set this and forget it. Okay. Right. You're going to have a stand-up meeting with your team where you ask, what is it I can do to help you get to your objective? What are you struggling with? How right. do I support you or other team members? Hey, you know, they need help from you. That's your job to kind of, you know, support your team, but don't get yeah. involved, right? Don't, right. don't do the thing. Um, unless you have your own objectives and you've done your own key results, that's up that's entirely up to you. Okay. Right, um, right. because you can use this personally to plan as well. And that's what I was going to get to, but we're going to look at it and then we're going to, we're going to run this. And here's the other thing that I've learned to do with this is it will look at certain times. So someone comes in and does their stand up meeting. They haven't got any of their key results achieved yet. And we're talking, we're in 30 days or less. Okay. Right. Whole team knows it every single week. Talk clock is ticking. All of a sudden you see, you know, they tie it on, they get, they get that piece done or they don't, right? right. There's really, right. again, they set that goal. They set those targets. So you're, they're holding themselves accountable. You're holding them accountable. This is a very good environment and it's very positive for people that, you know, buy into it. The people who don't, you don't want on your team anyways. Okay. Somebody who right. does not want to be held accountable to a result, all right, should not be on your team, period. Right. Right. They right. reject this or anything. Now, Here's where the leadership comes in. So when you're done the sprint or you're done the three month period, you're going to evaluate. So a lot of people have problems doing evaluations of their staff, right? We've talked right. about this a lot where like, you know, the traditional kind of system doesn't really reflect on what somebody's contributing at these, you know, at, at scale and at, at level. It's it's hard and difficult to kind of properly do those reviews because you're not with that person every day. You're not, you know, and a manager may not see, but this allows individuals show their contributions in front of the entire team, in right. front of everyone. It's out in the open. This is like running an open book policy. There's no dispute on who's killing it and who's not, right? And right. who's who's excelling at something and who's not. So now as we evaluate the effectiveness, and here's here's the other thing I see a lot, is a company will put all their energy and you know time into getting something built or getting something in place. Oh, we need right. a, we need a CRM. I, I, I love that one. They half ass put this thing together. <laughs> Nobody right. knows how to use it. No one right. knows how to implement it. We haven't right. thought about all the other pieces. Right. And then six months goes by and it's completely failed. They're back to spreadsheets. Right. Right. Why is that happening? And how can that company turn that around <laughs> and get everybody involved so that yeah. everybody like losing the battle by yourself as an owner sucks. OK, yeah. we're already kind of isolated, losing the battle with the team. All right. That doesn't buy into the, the whole thing. That is that's exponentially harder. But, right. you know, I'll tell you, it's a lot less impactful when your team loses. But at least they're taking the ownership of the loss. And we're already working right. towards a better, a better outcome because right. now we're all sharing that. Right. Nobody likes right. to lose. Right. But we all like right. to win. So again, when these things do occur, but and you're going to have times when you've lost yeah. and, and you're going to have times when you've won. Right. But I mean, to your point, you know, that, uh, that was another experience I had as well, um, where we, you know, we had some jobs that didn't go the way we wanted them to go. And it was a very different, it was very different with them, you know, it was very different from it, w the way it was in the first couple of years and the last couple of years when a job didn't go well, you know, I had so much more feedback and so much more, you know, we were working together, right. Instead mm -hmm. of, instead of me going and being, Hey, what happened? What happened? What happened? Why do we, you know, that was like, it was sort of like an all hands on deck experience, which, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it didn't, I'd still losing still sucks, but you know, we got better, a lot better. I, we made we made improvements more quickly because everybody yep. was rowing right absolutely whereas you, whereas it, you know with a lot of folks i think they you know they're kind of losing alone like you said and right. they're just out there on an island and because their people are you know because their people are like well you know it's your business so just, you know at least yep. i got paid you know I, Big, as long as i get a paycheck and, and yeah, and that's, that's not entirely the employee's fault, right? Right. That's a that again, and this is something that can be fixed, right? So yeah, I have sure. seen some incredible transformations in clients' businesses and my own businesses when they start to adapt to this. So I'll give you a classic example of where 
these are very effective. So we have a, a company that's scaled or grown in the last year or so, and they're all running around. The owner continues to take on projects that never get finished, right? CRM's half implemented and he's working harder than he's ever worked. Okay. He's, you, you know, he's got a brand new team and they feel lost. They feel how he yeah. feels. Okay. Yeah. And this is the saddest thing. Like, so then you have your A players kind of like they're killing it out in the field in the production yeah. and your management is struggling because they're brand new. Right. Okay. Right. Um, how do you pull, how do you pull somebody out of that and get them to recognize that the leadership is what the team in the production, if you can lead a production team, all right, don't worry about sales. Don't worry about like, they will right. come. Like if you've got those mechanisms right. in place right. and if you can lead by recognizing a problem, identifying a solution, all right, making it clear to everyone in the organization what the problem is, how we're going to fix this. Right. Okay, very little, very little is going to, um, and, and over time especially, very little is going to be able to upset the entire company, right? When you really get right. into this practice, because again, do we know we either won money or we didn't, right? What are we going right. to do to change that? It's It, it becomes a, a habit, right? And this is really where I'm trying to try to drive it home in terms of building these healthy habits even before you grow. Okay. So we can yeah. take this and break it down to how I would personally do it. Right. So yeah. let's say my objective is to increase MRR for a DFY offer. Okay. We'll use it. We'll use DFY. my done for you. Okay. Right. Similar to what we offer here. No, no, right. no, no connection. Okay. Yeah. So the key result would be, <laughs> you know, I want to establish a client retention churn rates, right? That would be a key result. I need to have that data. Okay, churn. Can you explain what churn is? Yeah, please? churn is when somebody leaves leaves a an offer. Like, you know, when they, by the way, we have a very low churn. So I'm happy about that. We were effective in this targeting. But a so churn, churn rate is, is something that uh, an owner would want to keep the track of. Yeah. Correct. So if you were to put it in the service-based business, when you lose customers, all right, right. you're going to look at that churn rate and lifetime value and all those things. Those are indicators right. of how well you're delivering it's, your service and how happy how people. Many, so how many leave versus how many stay? Correct. Right. Okay. So the key result or the outcome in order to achieve this is establish a client retention churn rate. So like we need to have a measurement. So now below that, we're going to have some tasks. Okay. The team's going to come up. Well, how am I going to do that? Now we're going to break that problem right. down. Okay. I know I need to get the established client retention churn rates. I'm going to analyze the historic data. I'm going to look at industry right. data. I'm going to establish the, the goals, who, when, where, why, and how. Okay. Now it gets granular. Right. So your team's now taking, okay, I'm going to think about this problem. What would we need to do? These right. are the, these are the things and you're going to put your name beside it. This person's yeah. going to put their name beside that one. All right, they're going to put their name beside that. Okay, great. So we've we figured out kind of how we're going to do that as a team. We know who's going to be accountable by when, right, to make this thing happen. Now let's go to the next key result. Hire a new clown, uh, account um, manager, okay? Finish your operation delegation, set up hiring process. Like these are key results, but they're now broken down into the more granular. The things we tend to think about as being a way to solve a problem are, are yeah. usually tasks, so right. like, for example, I need to get more leads. Well, that's not really looking at the problem. Why, right. when you when you take it and break it down into bite-sized pieces for you and your team and allow them to all contribute even in a small way. Okay, great. So, you know, what would be step one? Okay, we need to find out how many leads we need, right? We need mm -hmm. to we need to establish all. It forces you to think about how to produce that income or outcome. And by doing it over and over again with your team, they now learn how to solve their own, own problems and not come to you with all of these, you know, all of their problems that they could very easily solve themselves. And again, you're going to see certain people shine, certain people fall off. But now as people start to take ownership of these tasks and stuff, we start to see the patterns. So I know who's killing it just by going yeah. down the list and saying, oh, well, you know, I can see this person knocked off all these things. You know, they're contributing. They're, all their objectives got achieved. Right. Like, Again, I and I can see that from the thirty thousand foot view. I don't have right. to go deep to figure this out, right? And then over time as well, ma the managers, leadership, they hold the people in the in the in the um, in this accountable. And there's ways for people to move up. You're giving a pathway mm -hmm. to how if you make these contributions, everything's out in the open. It's like playing open book, right? right? right. The whole team is aligned, and the vision's clear. The problems. Yeah can all be solved. So 10 brains are much better like than one 100%, brain alone. 100%. Right? 100%. And this is exactly how it, it forces everyone to see. And then 
from doing this, guess what? Every single one of these things becomes what? A repeatable system. A repeat. We've right. already done it. We've mapped out how we did it. This is like a giant SOP. Yeah. So <laughs> I think, yeah. So I just want to answer something real quick, Jay. Sure. Because again, I think that, like I said, if, when we started out this conversation, I think it's so easy. Well, look, it's not, I think I know. And I, it's, it's easy for me, uh, not in this, but in other things, you know, you start thinking about, okay, I want this is, I want this outcome. So I want to sell, I want to do a million in sales this year. Mm -hmm. And then you go, oh, like, how am I going to do that? Cause we immediately go to how, which right. we need to go to how, but mm -hmm. I think one of the gifts in the, in what you were just showing um, our audience is that it makes the how a very sort of like, you know, paint by numbers, right? That's right. So right. You, know, you don't have to think about, you don't have to go, you don't have to pull your hair out. Cause again, you know, look, most contractors, and this is just the truth because they're great at the work. They're great at some part of the production or they're great at mm -hmm. sales. Um, they're probably not like strategic planners. So, you know, that's okay, right? There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with you if you can't do that stuff. So, you know, that's why we created this tool to make it like a paint by numbers thing where it's like, okay, right. so I want to do, you know, I did two and a half million dollars this year. I want to do, you know, I want to grow that by another half a million or 600,000 or whatever it is. Okay. How do I do that? And then you mm -hmm. just start paint by number. You start going down the list, right? Right. What do we need in so, terms of leads? Right. What do we need in terms of how many, how many of those leads are we going to close? How many of the right. leads are we going to kick because they're garbage leads? Right. Mm -hmm. So, and again, this results, the, the outcome of this is you're going to get the right people on the bus that should be right. in those meetings. Okay. You're going to get them aligned. You're going to get them targeted. So they're focused. And you're right. going to have the organization going the right direction instead of going all over the place and everything being out of control and chaos. All right. Because right. that's what happens when companies scale without these kind of structures in place. And that's you'll notice they're very, insane. very, it's very straightforward and simple because that's the, that's the, that's the real art. As you get bigger and things become more complicated, you have to make it simpler. Okay. You have to right. bring a very complex, complicated yes. problem and yes. make it simple for everybody from the top yes. to the bottom to understand right. here right. it is, here's our challenges. And the more you get people involved and the more you lead people through this process, the more confident they're going to become. Even when you fail, yeah. you, you are building your confidence. You know what not to do now. It's documented. Right. You know exactly. Okay. Right. So now how else are we going to approach this? And here's been lots of times. I, and I, I mean, I remember vividly knowing a plan was going to fail. All right. Knowing that like in my head, but keeping my mouth shut. Okay. Right. And this is the ultimate test of if you've yeah, really broke those chains hard. of micromanagement, because <laughs> I'm looking hard. at it going, okay, there's only, again, I, I measured my risk. I know it's right. not going to tank the company. I know it's, but right. I'm, right. I'm allowing these managers who have conviction, right. who believe in that this thing to, to try it. And even right. if I've done it, I, you know, all I can say is, Hey, like, I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm going to lead you and I'm going to coach you and I'm going to support right. you all I can. But I want you to know, like when you lock this in, like that's your, that's your outcome. So you, yeah. and you be again, even when they fail, now they come back and, Oh, you were right. But did I go below the line and say, you're stupid. This no. won't work. Yeah. We're not doing that. Shut them down. They don't ever want to contribute again. No, I said, Hey, you know what? There's a good opportunity to learn. I would love for you to right. go forward with that. I'd love to see how your outcome would be different than mine. All right. So here's my experience. Here's what I've had. And if they still want to go ahead with that, no problem. I'm here to support you. All right. right. And I, I, anything you need to try and do this, I'm happy to provide it for you. And let's continue to keep in touch. And we'll, we'll, right. we'll, we'll talk at the stand-up meeting. And then you see them right. going through it and they're like, oh my God, instead of just oh, shutting no. them down. So, right. And, and I'm going, right. and it's not a, I, I told you so attitude it's right. above the line going, this is how we learn. It's a process, right? right? Yep. We know now what not to do again. And that right. habit's been broken right there. And then if people don't understand what the, the cause and outcome is of certain decisions, first of all, again, it's not you transferring your knowledge and people right. don't trust you, right? If right. you're just a micromanager, they're not in generally trust trusted well, with much. Right. I think, I think too, that, you know, the, I mean, there is a tremendous value gift in figuring things out for ourselves. And, you know, just to like dip into psychology just for a second, just for a quick second, 
don't hope I don't lose anybody. Like, you know, when when we the, what's happening when we learn something ourselves, whether it's a huge loss or a huge win, is that experience has like it creates an emotional imprint, right? Mm -hmm. Think of I mean, if I said to you right now, what was your most painful job? You could answer that quickly, right? Oh, very quickly. You know, yeah. right? Yep. And it's not because it's in here. It you get a feeling. Mm -hmm. Right. It starts in right your in my body. Gut. <laughs> yeah, and then it goes to your head. So it starts yeah. here, then it goes to here. And the same thing. If I said, "What was your like? What was like? You know, what was the first time you knew like your company was go like this is really going places? Mm -hmm. You 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 know that too, and you actually probably don't know it here as much as you know it here. It's so funny you just said right? that. You know, when I knew my company was like, when I could finally step away from the operations, it was during an OKR meeting where they never really? asked me once, <laughs> not once. They never asked me once. Oh, and I was like, I was great. like a fly on the wall. It was that day. No word of lie. And I think I've told you the story before of like, <laughs> I walked out the door. The, I, the this first, was not planned. Okay. Right. For, we didn't plan I'm at this. A, I'm at an OKR <laughs> meeting and nobody That's even great. asked the opinions. No, like it was just, wow. this is what we're doing. This is, and yeah. I just knew that I no longer had a position <laughs> or a role to play anymore in those. Right. Yeah. So like my main objectives, and, and again, I still do that to this day. I still give because yeah. I am still the CEO of the company. I have right. to give those vision. I have to, but I don't, I don't tell people how to do it. And I don't, to be honest with you, I don't want like if I wanted to make myself very busy, I'd go in and try and figure yeah, out. You what just go start running work, yeah. But the sure. results, the results are even worse when you do that, right? Because now you're forcing yourself to wear multiple hats, right? To be an executive salesperson or be an executive, right. you know, manager to be an executive right. project manager. And I'm not those things. Well, I can't be all under, of those yeah. things. I can't be great yeah. at them all. Right. 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 Yeah. So no, again, think... this is where this is where. So this kind of thing is it's just critical right yeah so i think again so just to kind of like so to bring it like to boil it down a little bit so it's oh first of all it's okay to feel overwhelmed when it comes to planning uh, for sure it's normal. absolutely okay right if you're feeling if you're if you're in if especially if you're an exterior like you work on the outside and mm -hmm. and you're in the northern half of you know like of north america like it's okay. Like mm -hmm. you should feel overwhelmed. If you don't feel overwhelmed, you know, that's, that's unusual. If you don't feel that. So first right. of all, it's okay. You have everybody's permission. It's normal. And again, I plan, I like planning and I always feel overwhelmed. Okay. So, and I think you're the same. So number one, it's okay to feel overwhelmed. Number two, like it's okay not to have all of the answers. Yep. You don't have to know exactly what sale number, like what, what should, how many contracts you should do or how many contracts it's going to take. Like, if you don't know those things exactly, that's okay too, because mm -hmm. you didn't, you didn't become a great Sparky or a great plumber or a great Mason or a great roofer because of your accounting skills. Right. You became right. great at that stuff because either one, you did the work, like you were on the tools or two, you could sell the shit out of it. Generally right. speaking, in our trade. Okay. So it's okay, right? Don't beat yourself up. Don't feel like, oh my God, I should not do these things. Now, what's not okay is knowing, right? Staying in overwhelm and then staying in a place where you don't do anything. And or what's not okay you do is the same is thing that you've done. Pushing that on your team. Right. And yeah. then blaming, yeah. And then blaming your people. Like, why didn't you, why you, you didn't, she, you know, you didn't do this. Why did you do that? What are we doing yeah. here? Why did you make that decision? Don't be a victim. Or, You're not or, a victim. You know, a contractor that I know very well, he was sort of passive aggressive, what he would do. And this was almost worse than like screaming at your men. What he would do is he would go on to the, he would walk onto the job site and he would go all around and then things that weren't in the scope of work, he'd be like, oh, wait, you need to do this. Or we need to do this. And he wouldn't, and then he wouldn't write change orders for it. And mm -hmm. the men are just like, that was, I, I watched this and they were so, you could just see like their energy. Morale drop, yep. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? Mm -hmm. Like, could you be any more stupid? Right. So, so it's okay not to know what to do or what the number is. It's okay not to know how to do it because you can, right? 
And of course, that's why, that's why you built the, that's why you built the tool to take people through mm -hmm. like paint by numbers. Okay. Start here. And then you can, you know, and then work with your team. And by the way, shameless plug, if you don't know how to do that, like we have a lot, a lot of, we, we can offer We will that. help you get those things in. And yeah. that's, again, I use this in every offer that we make. So anything that we look at solving a problem explain in anyone's that, business. Explain yeah, that, Jay. Explain absolutely. So, that, please. so when I give a proposal to a client to help them fix a piece of you know, the, the puzzle in their business, sure. it always starts with OKR. So what is my objective? And I'm getting right. clear with the client. What is it exactly you want to solve? And I get them right on it. And then right. I, I, I demonstrate to them how my team uses those things. So the outcome is what they want. They don't, right. By me putting in, right. like, I'm going to do this, this, and this, and this is going to give you your objective. Right. I'm showing them. And then as they get involved in these projects, they the the hope here is that they start to apply it to fixing other things, right? So right. as a consultant, I yeah. can't go in. I would get overwhelmed, too. If I have to go into business, and we work with oh, some yeah. big businesses, yeah. and I have to look at, okay – what like the whole thing fix the <laughs> right. whole thing yeah, exactly. right well i can't do that so i'm not right. and nor would i because you can destabilize companies very quickly so you right. have to pick the areas where you can get a, a measurable result well the only right. way you can do that is strategically thinking and i use the same process i use it for my own life like i yeah. use objectives in my own life yep. as a as an individual right. all yeah. right my objectives and what needs to happen. Like if you just think of about it in that way and writing it down and getting it out of your right. head, you are going to be amazed at the outcome. So a good example of this is I write my objectives at the same time I do with all my business every quarter, every three months, I look back, I reflect, Hey, what, what went on? But I'll tell you, I usually throw those objectives in my desk, in my, my, my notepad. Right. And I probably don't look at them the rest of the quarter. Yeah, and then right. at the end of the quarter, I open it up and I go, wow, I nailed it. Right. Yeah, because right. I've gotten, it's 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 been delivered to my head. Now I don't suggest that's what you do, but that's what has worked right. for me for a long time. And almost always, I achieve those objectives. The same exact principles. You want an organized. You want a you know a, a high leadership role. You want to attract A players. You want to bring in you know high caliber people. Okay, get out of the way. We know, right? right? You control right. the vision of the company. Get out right. of the way. If you right. need to wear one hat. That would be your place on the the objectives, key results, right. but it keeps everybody again communicating in line. There is no questions of what we need to do, how we need to do this, and right. it, it removes you from having to be task based. That is the worst right. kind of leadership you can have because it takes all your time. And if you're not there, what happens? Nothing. So if you're wondering why production yeah. drops, like if you're wondering why you know things goals don't get met it's because you weren't there you weren't there to supervise how many of you guys are sitting there going you know like my team doesn't do can't anything when i'm not there. Oh, yeah. yeah can't right. take an exactly. early yeah can't take a long weekend there's no accountability right. these are right. all symptoms of you not having a system of leadership in place and you don't need again i i want to i want to make sure i emphasize this this is true leadership when you can implement something like this, but you don't need to be a good leader to follow the rules of the structure right. of leadership. That's right. Okay. That's so right. if you don't feel you're a good leader and you suffer in that's that okay. area, that's fine. That's okay. Yeah. You can fine. leverage somebody else who is a great leader and right. has those skills. Right. And now they come in and that's again, yes. you, you know, everybody's aligned and we're, we're, we're enforcing things as a team versus right. an individual or individuals. Right. And the person goes, well, I don't have the money to do that. Well, if you do the, if you work the plan, you will. That's right? right. I don't have the money to hire a leader. Yeah. But if you make a lot of money, you can. That's the thing. You don't have it today, <laughs> right. but if you do this thing, you'll be surprised. Yeah. That's surprised. right. And and again, this is the difference between doers and non-doers, right? Like right. a doer is going to get it done no matter what. All right. Yeah. A non-doer. Right that you don't want to have on your team and that you, you know, maybe taking up space or just, you know, air, it's going to be blatantly obvious. Right. right. So again, we've, we've talked about this for a while now. Holy. We yeah. Good. So I so said to kind of wrap it up. Well, we, we came on a, sorry, we were a little late, late today, folks. Um, okay. So, all right. To put a, like a bow on this, um, planning is hard. Mm-hmm we're it's we're not so we're it's a, no not neither of us is saying planning is easy because it's hard for us and mm -hmm. i think both of us are actually pretty good at it so planning mm -hmm. is hard number one number two it's also you don't have to know where to start nope. um, if you don't know where to start that's where we actually have a lot to add and 
we don't come in and like we don't come in and just and take over right we actually nope. show like the folks that are working with us we're showing them how to do this and to your point like we're not changing anybody we're just nope. helping them like run a more profitable easier business because when, right. to your point it is hard when you're doing everything and you're the guy or you're the girl that is exhausting and and it's i mean it's a trap because if you're it's actually growing wheel. if you're growing and you're doing everything like that forget it yeah so so we, so we have a lot of value to bring with that um we do have this resource available too right jay mm -hmm. is, is yeah, it we're, on the, yeah in the facebook group um yeah. It just reach out to us it, we're, no matter what channel you're on we'll we'll share it with you so great resource um easy to uh to, to navigate and again keep it simple guys like yeah. you don't have to make this complicated or difficult and there's a lot more layers you can add to it later but for any company and i've done this across the board in all types of settings over 100 companies i'd say probably you know this year alone where we've implemented right. this system and it's the first place we start okay because when people aren't aligned and don't know what's going on, what happens, right? Our emotions oh, take over. Yeah, our, yeah, our, yeah. our micromanagement takes over. We start right. to panic. We, we yeah, can't we manage the emotions. That's right. right. And then we just go right. back to our same old habits and we, we call it a loss. I don't, we yeah. don't let that happen. Right. This is the way to really, you know, get outside of that trap. And, and again, it's, you know, it's simple enough. Everybody can do it. If you're doing it, if you're just one man in a, you know, in a truck doing the, doing your thing, or you had two guys, you can do this at a micro level that it's going to be extremely effective. Nobody can lose from this, right? right? If you're running a, a full fledged team and you know, yeah. you're having a lot of these symptoms yeah. that we've been yeah. describing again, implement something like this and you're going to see a world of difference. Almost, almost the first three months will be difficult, but by yeah. the second, third round, you will see a exponential change in everything. It, yeah, there's not a place I, it doesn't touch. Yeah. And I was just, just final, my final, final thought is, you know, I, I actually, I know this cause I did this, you know, mm -hmm. I started planning, I, I got better at the planning and then I started really planning and like going through the business and then giving people like I did, I did the, I followed this model. And again, this was part of how I was able to take a company that was, you know, on paper insolvent and turn it into a company that has now actually been able to sell itself, you know, successfully complete a sale. So, you know, like, this stuff is, it's, it is real and it works. And, you know, and again, you know, I, you don't, you know, it doesn't have to be so hard. And that's, you know, that's why Jay yeah. created this tool to make it easier. It's not easy to make it easier. And something that, again, obviously if you, the owner gets a win, but then everybody gets a win because every, get, right. everybody gets to participate. So, um, right. so if you, comment or you know if you're in the if you're in our group already and you're watching this and you don't have it comment and you know we'll get it to you um if you're outside of the group and watching this on one of the other channels again comment and and um we'll you know get you into the group and um get you the resource so thanks everybody for being with us on our first live stream of 2024 we're here every friday uh if you yeah, you're seeing this and you just want to get into the group you want to be a part of our exclusive community Again, there's a, there's going to be a link. Hit that link to join the group or comment. And um, love to have you be a part of this thing that we're doing. It's pretty special. So thanks again for being with us. We're here next Friday at 3 p.m. and the next Friday at 3 p.m. And um, and so uh, we'll see you again next week. Thanks, guys.